Good evening. Welcome again to Dimension 5. I'm Betty Lou Varnum, and our subject tonight is involved with two groups in our community. One is the Gay People's Alliance, the other is the Lesbian Alliance. If you have questions for the members of our panel, these are the numbers for you to call. 294-7307, and we will accept station-to-station -station collect calls. If you're calling from Des Moines, the number is 244-3738. And these are the members of our panel. They are, as I say, from our community. And the guests are Stephen Court, Karen Moore, Dennis Brum, Kay Scott, Connie <coughs> Tanzo, and Jim Osler. Now, when we originally planned to do tonight's program, we had thought about commenting on the Marcus Welby program that ran from 9 to 10. It dealt with a very controversial issue. It has been um, protested against by members of the uh, Gay People's Alliance, by uh, members of the uh, National Education Association, by the American Psychiatric Association, and by numerous groups. It dealt with the molesting of a child. And because we were going to be talking this evening, we asked that the members of our panel come early and view the program and give their reactions to it, what they felt was destructive or inaccurate about the subject as it was dealt with on Marcus Welby. If you saw that program, you would be interested not only in what your reactions were, but what the reactions of our guests are. Let me remind you about the numbers to call if you have questions. 294-7307, unless you're calling from Des Moines, and then it's 244-3738. Stephen, what was your reaction to the program? Well, the thing I disliked most about was that they didn't make any or hardly any reference to the fact that this is not like the way most homosexuals are. Not all homosexuals are child molesters. Very few are. And you, you felt it was very strongly implied that the uh, teacher who molested the, the teenage child uh, was homosexual. Oh, yeah, but also that that was how all homosexuals are. and It was allowed, the impression that that was how all homosexuals are, was allowed to... Uh, be present in a lot of viewers' minds. Dennis? Yeah. I sort of think the whole program, like, you know, reinforced a lot of stereotypes and myths, like this child had been molested, so everybody was really afraid, you know, he's going to become a homosexual, you know, that's one of his big fears, too. You know, if, if you're forcibly raped by someone, you know, I think, if anything, that would turn you off to an experience, logically. I mean, also, you know, the program in, <coughs> in general, you know, I just don't feel like I can respond to it that much because I just thought it was pretty bad, you know. The melodrama was to try to play on your emotions and make you feel sorry for him. And, you know, I just have no other responses myself. Okay. Well, one of the things I thought was that even though it would be a bad experience and it would turn him off to homosexuality, by that they were implying that homosexuality was bad and that, you know, he was supposed to be a man. He was all right. He was normal. You know, he was not like anyone else. You know, he was not going to be homosexual, whereas, you know, I would have liked to th them to approach it by saying, it doesn't make any difference what happened to you happened to you, and this man, you know, was sick, but that does not mean if you are going to be homosexual, you're going to be sick too. And they were approaching it that homosexuality is sick, therefore, and heterosexuality is the only norm. Kai? Um, the, at one point when the father was confronted with what had happened to his son, the father said they should show, throw all those creeps in jail, and there was no effort to make, you know, as they said, to make it clear that these, are not, not all homosexuals should be thrown into jail simply because um, a child molester had um, committed a crime. And to reinforce Kay's observation about the uh, the fear that the boy had his biggest problem was after his biggest problem after the assault was his fear that there was something he had done to encourage the assault and that he might be queer if it went to if it went to court that um, people would think that there was something wrong with him and the wrong with him was implied in the program that he himself had homosexual tendencies may have encouraged the teacher or that his friends would not respect him. They would begin to um, ridicule him because he was possibly gay. Jim? Well, basically, they never seem to make the point that probably 98% of all the child molesting 
that is done is done by heterosexual men against little girls. And like they said, you know, it's this guy, this kid was afraid that everybody's going to think he's queer or something just because he was raped by this guy. The show itself is really pretty bad. Karen. Well, I thought it was <coughs> interesting that the because the rape victim was a man, um, the person who raped him was a bad man, and um, the rape victim was, you know, okay. But if the victim had been a woman, you know, they wouldn't say that that is a bad man who raped you and that that man is mentally ill, you know. He's just a man getting off his sexual desires and everything. So even from a sexist feminism point of view, it was... <laughs> Do you really, really feel that the attitude of the public would be that toward a child molester, boy or girl? A 14-year-old girl, sure. Well, if, if the attitude were not such that if, even if they would consider that that man were ill, they would not automatically say, let's throw all heterosexual men in jail because right. one girl was raped. But you feel that the implication was there that, that I because think the he was homosexual, that, that homosexuality treatment. too was a disease, mm -hmm. rather than that this man was obviously mentally ill. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have questions that are coming in. Let me give you the numbers again. 294-7307 from Des Moines, 244-3738. Our viewers want to know why you as homosexuals should be any more upset by the Marcus Welby program than teachers should be, because the man who did the molesting of the child, in this case, happened to be a teacher. We shouldn't, I don't think. <laughs> well, we, we think should. It's a, yeah. well, yeah. If we are going to go they into the area of education, I have found that, that um, they're hesitant to hire homosexuals. If you are a known open homosexual, you will not receive the same consideration as a, quote, more normal member of the community. There is immediately the fear when one states one's homosexuality that one will, if not directly assault the children, will encourage, uh, encourage the children to follow a lifestyle which is not that which the parents would have them follow. Do you think that is one of the more common uh, beliefs that people have, that homosexuals do, that basically they, they will molest children, that they are child molesters? Well, they have children at a very impressionable age, and so uh, most children have crushes on their teachers, whether same sex or opposite sex, and if the same sex teacher they have a crush on happens to be a lesbian or <laughs> homosexual man, the um, they may tend to follow that same lifestyle. If nothing else, on a very practical level, parents might fear that their children would choose a lifestyle which will cause them much grief. They would like them to go the easier way. And parents do not fear as much <coughs> when they have a heterosexual man, you know, teaching their young girls. You know, they do not worry so much, you know, about their girls being assaulted as they seem to worry when they have a homosexual male or female, you know, teaching. Homosexuality implies, you know, something perverse to parents, whereas heterosexuality, even though, you know, something might happen in the classroom, you know, does not imply that, that to the parents. Our viewers would like to know whether or not you are stating that uh, you do not believe that there is anything abnormal about being homosexual. No, no there is nothing abnormal about being homosexual. <laughs> and you would all agree, and let's clear that out of the way now. You believe that there is nothing abnormal in homosexuality. Homosexuality is a viable lifestyle for someone to choose. You, know, you can have all the enrichment that a heterosexual can have. Just you know, you have the same emotions, the same feelings. It's just that you're directing them towards a member of your same sex. So, I also feel there's nothing too abnormal about heterosexuality or bisexuality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're saying that any of the choices you feel are are normal choices, whatever normal that means. means whatever point. makes you feel good. What um, was the reaction? of your two groups to the um, vote that was taken by the American Psychological Association, Psychiatric, Psychiatric Association, um, saying that they would no longer view homosexuality as uh, a disease. You say raw or it about a, time or what? It was a step in the yeah. right direction. Yeah. I mean, any battle that's won, you know, is part of the overall struggle, but, you know, there are still lots and lots and lots of battles to be won, you know, here in Ames and in central Iowa mm -hmm. and across the country. Even in the psychiatric association, because there are many individual psychiatrists and psychologists who do not accept the view of the American Psychiatric Association that homosexuality is a viable lifestyle. So you've got to fight the individuals as well. Can gay people get along with 
uh, non-gays. <laughs> <laughs> we went through the business beforehand of trying to decide, you know, if every time the word homosexual was used, I should amplify it and say, or lesbian. And does the thing hold true to, to yeah. gays? Do you? Mm -hmm. Gay That's women fine. and gay men are gay people. All right, so that, so. All right, so that when the question is asked that way, I can ask yeah. it that way, right? Yeah. I don't have to. Okay. All right. Can gays get along with non-gays? We don't really have a choice. <laughs> right now, there are numbers. <laughs> but we can, we can ignore them. Ideally, would you like not yeah. to? No, yeah, I have lots partner? of friends who are straight. <laughs> 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 would you, yeah, um, yeah. all right, so that <laughs> you would all say that, that you do get along with non-gays? Mm, yes. Generally, you know, there are specific individuals that we may not get along with <laughs> because they may not accept us or they may become hostile towards us. But, you know, generally we can get along with people as long as they can accept us and get along with us. But un underlying that question is a presumption that all gays have a lifestyle or a life that is different from, quote, non-gays. And when I speak to classes on sexuality, they want to know about the gay lifestyle, and I really can't tell them. I mean, you know, I have no specific knowledge about a, quote, gay lifestyle. Too. You know, some of my best friends, all of my best friends are probably gay. Very few friends within a specific lifestyle. Yeah. Some of my best friends are in the dorm, you know, and I, you know, I get along with them fine, some of them. <laughs> are you people happy? Oh, yes. Really Inflation loud. has hit me terribly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, really. The economy. <laughs> You're not, I think the, the viewer is interested in, you know, are you finding the burden of, of the of society's reaction. Now that I realize I'm not sick, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to realize you can grow, you know, out of out of this oppression that we have to face and we have to deal with in our everyday life. If you channel it the right ways, it can it can be a, a growing thing for you and you can learn a lot and you know, it can become a valuable means of just of growth, I guess. Has it been more difficult for you since you've publicly avowed that you're homosexual, would it not be much easier for you to uh, not, you know, come out and, and say it and to I'd make the statement? I'd say emotionally it's a lot easier because yeah. you don't have to keep all these feelings yeah. inside of you hidden. And that takes up a lot of energy to keep all these major feelings you have hidden. Yeah. There may be a few, like, minor cases or uh, scattered cases of, um, you know, like being threatened with your with your life or something like that. But <laughs> minor cases. Minor cases, yeah. Are you serious about that? Have you had threats? I've never had my you? life threatened, but I've had people threaten to beat me up and spit because on me and stuff like that. Because, because they dis dislike no. you personally or because you, you are a homosexual? Because I'm gay. Never know. <laughs> Just, that's one very real fear. There are very real fears about being a homosexual. <coughs> Things that can happen to you if people know. You know, they can threaten you, beat you up. Uh, you can possibly lose your job, although they would not come out and say, you know, in your firing notice that it was because you were a homosexual. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be thrown out of where you live. You know, you can lose friends. You know, that's very important if you've had friends for a long time and you come out and say, you know, I'm gay, and suddenly you never see those people again. <coughs> so they're very real fears, but like, you know, he said, keeping it hidden takes a lot more energy and hurts you a lot more, I think, in the long run. Any other responses to the are, are gay people happy? Is there a disservice in just the term gay? What about the word happy? <laughs> 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 All right, well, do with that, but we can deal with happy. We've played with that. But the business of, of the term, does the word gay? I view that as a very positive word. I mean, there's so many negative words that society has thrown upon us. I think gay is a word that came out of homosexual culture itself. You know, originally it was had like a double meaning, you know, if someone thought another person might be a homosexual, like in the 50s when things were a lot worse than they are now, they could perhaps throw it into their conversation and the other person might pick up on it and that was like a secret code, you know, so that's something we've picked upon ourselves. I think generally that tends to imply to me at least a happy homosexual rather than just a homosexual or, you know, any of the other negative words. Well, there are political groups who would even take exception to the word to the word gay. You know, a feminist-oriented group takes pride in the word lesbian because it has a history, you know, an, an ancient history, and it implies something else. It implies more than a sexual definition, but um, a lifestyle, a love of women, you know, women's rights, etc. So that for some people, even the word gay is very frivolous, and 
all of these words that we've used are inadequate to some extent. We've dealt with that one. Okay. Why is the uh, homosexual life so transient? Our viewers want to know. By the way, I should mention that we are going to have a change in panel members part of the way through. We're going to change uh, some of the panelists. And uh, that's just for your information, not as any kind of <laughs> comment along the way. All right. Why, why is the homosexual life so transient? What's trans? I, think I don't know. <laughs> no, transient. I think. Well, the trans. university communities are transient. That means there's a great term. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think they're probably um, addressing themselves to why do homosexual couples change their composition so frequently, which you could question whether or not that's a truth. For yeah. One thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is an obvious stereotype. You know? I think heterosexuals are just probably as transient as homosexuals. Like our whole society is um, very mobile. You know, at this time in history. And in that sense, you know, we're all very transient. And you know, there's a myth that homosexual um, couples, quote unquote, don't s don't stick together or anything, which you know is a, is a straight myth. It's not necessarily true at all. But they do well, have a lot more pressures. We do have a lot. Straight couples yeah. do. Or supports, not necessarily pressures that could yeah. be positive pressures, such as economic or legal yeah. binds, well, which make life course. easier for. A Heterosexual. I'd like to know why the heterosexual divorce rate is so high myself. You know? <laughs> why don't the viewers like answer that? <laughs> How do your parents react? <laughs> well, why do you all, why do you all <laughs> kind of laugh at that? Well, because you've been asked it so much, or because yeah. me. <laughs> parents yeah, are a big problem? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think telling your parents are the worst is probably the worst thing you have to go through because. Even though you think you may know what they're going to say, you can never be sure because this kind of question is usually never brought up before. So you're afraid that if you tell them you're gay, they're going to throw you out of the house and disown you forever and all kinds of very major hassles. My parents, however, you know, they, ex they accepted it. They told me they didn't have any choice. <laughs> yeah. What about mm. parents' reaction? Um. Actually, I'm an orphan, but I don't count, so that I would like to address myself to your observation about the reaction of this group. If you look at, you know, if you look at the makeup of the group, we're all fairly young and have had that as a recent experience, telling parents it's been a major thing that we're not very far away from, so it's still emotionally quite real. And it's not like asking you know, a 50-year-old uh, homosexual about parents, because by that time, the problem has a much different perspective. What is your response? Well, I do feel it, it's a hard thing, but, uh, you know, my parents, you know, have accepted it as much as they've accepted anything else I've told them that wasn't quite, you know, along the lines they had planned for me or whatever. But uh, I don't view it as a major problem because I plan on just going on and uh, living my life, you know. And and I do feel mostly it's it's the parents' problem to deal with their own reaction to it, you know, how they feel about it. You know, they're the ones that are going to have the most problems about it because they probably have all the stereotypes in their head. <coughs> Dennis? Well, I could probably go on for hours. I didn't really <laughs> seem to. My mother is dead, and when I told my father, um, we had a lot of hassles, I guess is the best way to put it. That's putting it mildly, like I was even threatened by him and some other things. Um, he didn't respond well at all. I think that that was like two years ago. This is sort of... Uh, Gone, gone over a little bit, you know, we get along somewhat better, but we still don't deal with this aspect at all. Like whenever it's brought up, it's usually brought up by my father and he still reacts very negatively, so. Karen? Well, I have the advantage of great distance. My parents live in Massachusetts and so I don't really have to deal with them too much. But when I was home last year, Christmas time, I told my sister and I guess she freaked out, but I didn't know it at the time. So along about February, I get this heartbreaking letter from my father and how I need to seek help and all this, and not even the lowliest of animals, you know, do this. <laughs> Dear, so one of the counselors at the Student Counseling Center here talked with my mother and kind of calmed her down a little bit. But, and I sent them some books, and we haven't talked about it at all. They, they don't even want to talk about sex at all, you know. It's, so I'm kind of dreading going home this Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. Stephen? When they first found out, there was a feeling, well, I'll get over it eventually. You know, it's just a phase I'm growing. going through. Yeah, it's a phase. 
and um, finally they've accepted that it uh, may not be a phase, or if it is, I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> but now I guess their biggest worry is that because of a lot of the stereotypes that they think, you know, they think that I'm going to fall into a lot of pitfalls through life and uh, a lot have a lot of problems that they assume all homosexuals have, you know. You haven't mentioned any of you the one comment that I would think you would have had to cope with, and that is, what have I done? What have I done wrong oh, yeah. on oh, the part of the yeah. parents? That, that yeah. happens. Yeah. Wasn't that, wouldn't that be one of the first responses? Yeah, yeah we tried so hard to bring you up. Yeah. What did I right do wrong? Way. It's obviously my yeah, fault see. because I, I didn't properly uh, yeah. do things. That's, that's do you feel, any of you, that it was your parents' fault? No. Did they do anything wrong? <laughs> fault? <No>. That's <laughs> implying <laughs> that something's wrong yeah. in the first place. I'm quoting what they would right. probably say. So you're saying that it was not... Uh, the theories that, that, you know, say homosexuals have dominant mothers and weak fathers just don't hold, hold water at all. Like, lots of heterosexuals have dominant mothers and weak fathers. <coughs> Why do they turn out to be a heterosexual? You know, no one has really explored into sexuality enough that I feel they can accurately say why anyone becomes anything sexually. You know, it's amazing sometimes in our society that people are sexual at all because we're fed so much negative, you know, stuff about sex from the time we're born. We'll continue our discussion. If you have questions, 294-7307 from Des Moines, 244-3738. For our discussion of the Gay People's Alliance and the Lesbian Alliance, we'll be back after this message. Look at oh! With Burlington Champagne patios of Montville, the support is invisible. Burlington! My patios let my tummy bulge! Yuck! Burlington Control Top patios are engineered to hold your hips and tummy in. Burlington! My knee highs are too tight at the top. Oh. Burlington pant stockings have a special knit band that stays up comfortably. Burlington! Dry skin? Listen to Amy Green. If you're worried about dry skin, I've got good news for you. Now there's a soap that's specially formulated to moisturize your skin. It's called Tone. And Tone contains cocoa butter and a unique moisturizing system. Tone works with nature to help your skin feel soft and smooth. Try Tone. It's terrific. Tone, the soap with cocoa butter and moisturizers. It's new. Highland potato chips, real potato chips, the best potatoes from God's green earth, sliced thin, cooked in pure vegetable shortening, just the right amount of salt. Highland potato chips, real sunshine day, Highland, great Highland day. Straighten your tie, company's coming. Three little maids from the toughest school in the jungle. Yeah! The general. The field marshal, the colonel, Savage Sisters. Are you the girl to call for the camp? You're right on time. Savage Sisters. Wait. Our guests tonight are members of the Gay People's Alliance and the Lesbian Alliance. We were talking about uh, the reaction of your parents when you told them that, that uh, you were homosexuals. Dennis, you, were, you yeah. wanted to say something more about parents whose children may come to them with that particular yeah. statement. I think that a lot of parents just don't know how to react at all. And you know, the best advice that I could give them, having been through it myself, is you know, the best thing to do is not to freak out. 
and to try to like maintain communication with our children. You know, that's a really important thing. I wish that in my case that had been what happened. I have a book that I brought over from our office in the Union, which is in room three. <laughs> And it's called Society and the Healthy Homosexual, and I'd recommend this for any parent who's like, you know, their child has told them they're gay, or any gay person, who, you know, also who's thinking about telling their parents, because this has a lot of very effective steps in it. You know, it's written by a psychiatrist. It has a lot of very, very and good information. I wish I'd read it before I <coughs> told my father. It's called Society and the Healthy Homosexuals by Dr. George Weinberg. Yeah. Good enough, because we're having problems getting a shot of the particular book. Okay. Um... Do you believe in a gay marriage? And if so, uh, could you be faithful to such a marriage? Is is there any state where where homosexuals may legally marry? No, Washington now, I think. State or D.C.? Neither one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, by, by court? <clears throat> but on my mind, marriage, a traditional marriage, kind of all kinds of... Uh, really oppressive things like there's got to be one who's going to be got to be somebody who's going to be really dominant and make all the decisions and somebody's going to stay home and run the house and do all the little housewifey things well i think that's a stereotypical concept of marriage <laughs> okay but that's most of the marriages i've seen are like that right. but yeah, it, as, as far as uh... gay people living together for a long period of time and and uh... Planning on sharing a life together, lots of people do. Yeah, yeah. it depends on how you define marriage more than anything else. I think it's important for gay people to realize that, you know, perhaps heterosexuality, you know, and their roles haven't worked out so well for them. So, you know, I don't think we should mimic their roles necessarily. <coughs> we Is there try any to move on the, on the part of the homo homosexual community to have marriages legalized and to, to get at least? Uh, uh, the homosexual community is not unified in any specific goals. Like some aspects of it may be working for that, while others aren't, you know. You can't really generalize on any issue. Before you could make marriage legal, you would have to first make homosexuality legal. And in most states, there are statutes on the book which make uh, homosexuality illegal. So to make homosexual marriage illegal is kind of jumping the gun. First, we have to get the laws off the books. This referring to the laws involving the rights of consenting adults? Yeah. All right. The sodomy Sodom laws, adults. they're called in Ohio. They also apply to heterosexuals as well, legally, like theoretically. I think 95% of the people of the state are probably felons, you know, because of the sexual behavior they engage in. Because there's only one sexual act which is legal in the state, and it's only under one set of circumstances, which is married. This is directed to the uh, members of the Lesbian Alliance. Do you want children? Do you ever have any feelings about not having a family? Well, I, <laughs> I hate kids, <laughs> but, but sometimes I have these motherhood fantasies, you know, but they go away after short periods of time. <laughs> I just really can't stand children, but... <laughs> okay, so this is not a, yeah. a loss as far as you're concerned. Uh, I don't think I have any real objections to children. I grew up in a large family, and a lot of the responsibility for the younger ones was on the older ones, and I was one of the older ones. And so as far as the responsibility and uh, the little nitpicking things that you have to do when you have children, I'm not interested in that at all. <laughs> but uh, plus, uh, I'm not interested in being a heterosexual in any way, shape, or form, which is what would have to happen if I were going to have a child. Mm. I have three sons. And um, I think in that question, there are almost three answers. There's um, the fact that even the term lesbian or homosexual does not preclude other kinds of sexual activity or commitments. It's simply something when once that appellation is thrown at somebody, you can never get away from you know, homosexual as such. And being a lesbian uh, does not preclude having children, caring for them, and maybe if not your own children, being involved in professions for which you can contribute to the life of a child without necessarily having your own to care for. The I'd question I'd like was directly uh, worded for for the uh, uh, Lesbian Alliance members, but... Uh, yeah, I'd like to know why they didn't ask the men, <laughs> too. You know. they're, they're assuming that women want to have children only, you know. Right, well, I'm going to ask it, Fine. put in <laughs> that part for my question. So, do you have a feeling about it? Um, I kind of don't like, hate kids, too. <laughs> but, um, 
I think at some point I might like to have children and then it's possible to adopt. Uh, in some cities it's possible to adopt. Um, but right now I really, it doesn't bother me a lot. Dennis? Um, at this point in my life I don't think, you know, I'm financially secure enough to afford children or, <laughs> you know, I could take on the responsibility because I'm still dealing with a lot of things just in myself. Perhaps sometime, you know. I don't want to get caught in the trap once again of saying, you know, I have to have children because I've always been told that that's what I have to have to fulfill me, you know. And I'm afraid that I might get caught in that trap. Uh, so, you know, I can't speak for the future, but at this present time, it's totally out of the question. Jim? I'd like to have children eventually. I'm a um, child-oriented major here at the university. And I don't see any reason why I shouldn't have kids. I really like kids. So that, um, are you are you speaking of adoption or are you speaking of having your own children? Probably be adoption. What are the, uh, there I, are, as I understand it, changing attitudes on the part of the courts toward uh, homosexual adoptions? Is this fairly widespread or is it still? It's pretty hidden right now. I believe in Minneapolis there's a, a court case going on right now where two men wish to adopt a child and they're encountering some difficulties. They are in some places um, placing homosexual teenagers in homosexual foster homes, but that's as far as any trend has gone with more than one specific case. And as far as if your mother and a lesbian getting custody of your children through the courts is very difficult. Mm -hmm. They set up impossible conditions such as, you know, you can't live with a woman, you know, you love, you know. Or you have to go undergo rehabilitation. Right. If you want to keep your children. Yeah. Or they don't give them to you at all. <laughs> How did you realize that you were homosexual? I think that that's, you know, all right, that's a question, once again, I would throw back. How does anyone realize they're heterosexual? I was asking, assuming they are. <coughs> For me, personally, you know, I, I had sexual awakenings when I was in puberty, like almost everyone else I know, and my sexual impulses were predominantly directed toward members of the same sex, you know, when I was like 12. But unlike my heterosexual brothers and sisters, you know, who were supposedly going along the normal route, all of a sudden I realized, you know, everybody thinks I'm queer or something, you know. And I put this great big wall, you know, this emotional block up in my mind to try to protect myself, and like that lasted for seven years. So I didn't really admit it to myself until I was like 19, but I sort of originally realized it when I was 12. Was this true for all of you, that the realization came fairly, fairly early? Yeah, you don't realize that, that you're homosexual. You have feelings long yeah. before you, you even yeah, yeah. encounter the word or encounter, uh, you know, the bad attitudes that society has about that word and the, the acts involved with it. But you have, you have feelings for members mm -hmm. of your same sex probably long before you realize that you're homosexual mm -hmm. and everything that that term implies. Yes. And then you go through the process of feeling that you're a bad person, you know, and then having to work through that and really say positively, you know, I am a homosexual and I feel good about that. It's a, it's a very long process, but you have the feelings, you know, probably when you're a child. But I think one thing that everyone here has said is somehow it's come from the outside. Somehow certain kinds of behavior, you notice that other people are beginning to call you names or begin to suggest to you that you're somehow different. And I remember in my childhood before I knew I had any sexual feelings at all simply because of um, being rather aggressive in baseball and football and being called things like dyke or butch and not having any concept what those words meant and it's simply behavior which was not appropriate to a little girl. And these words and even the term homosexual, uh, um, they're words that are used like weapons by peers or, or supervisors simply to make you behave in a way the way everyone else behaves. So Yeah, and the comments that you get are very sparse in between and they're always bad, almost always bad. And so you either have have trouble finding any identity for yourself, you know, not really knowing what your identity is or you assume that you have a bad identity, that you know, you are bad because of it. I think it's important for the viewers to also realize that, like, we're in the minority, you know, there's lots and lots of people out there who are still dealing with it. They <coughs> may be much older than us, and they may never be able to completely come to grips with this just because of what society has said and done to them, you know. I think it's, it's really a sad state of affairs when society can't accept diversity within, you know, 
within itself. What type of lifelong relationships do most homosexuals seek? Or do they seek lifelong relationships <laughs> at all? I don't know if we can speak for most homosexuals. We, as far as real feelings, we can only speak for ourselves. Yeah. So We'll settle for that. All right. I want to I want love her, eventually. <laughs> a marriage, if you will. Mm -hmm. A long-term relationship. I hopefully feel I am <laughs> in a long-term relationship <laughs> <laughs> and have been, you know, with Connie for over a year and a half. And, you know, we hope to make this, you know, live out our lives together. So ideally, it would be that a lifelong, Commit whatever they commitment say. Commitment to each yeah. other, mm -hmm. right. Jim? I don't really know. I don't know if I really want a long-term relationship or if I've just been socialized into wanting some kind of a long-term relationship. Because <coughs> when you're growing up, you know, you see all these ads and practically everything you've, you hear or s um, have told you is, you know, you're going to grow up and you're going to raise a family and you're going to have all this, when you're old and gray, you'll have all these loving grandchildren or whatever. You'll never be alone, which usually does not work in this country. Karen? Well, um, I, I haven't really sat down and, uh, you know, made up my mind this is what I'm going to do, but sometimes I feel like I want to find a lover and live with her for the rest of my life in a very close, monogamous relationship, and at other times I feel like I want to live with a group of women and like a collective or something like that and have a very open relationship. I think ideally that would be the best and have my needs met by a, a group of people and men and women too and I don't know, I'm still young, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you comment on the uh, American Medical Association uh, documented reports showing the low levels of male hormones in homosexuals? <laughs> I thought I read. homosexual males? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I read a report uh, um, just a little while ago that said they could not find any conclusive evidence yeah. that there was a difference in hormonal levels. There are doc documented reports which say that, too, that there, there's no, ch no they difference at all. They don't know what normal. they're talking about half the time. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't necessarily respect organizations which, you know, consider us sick. Like, <laughs> they, I don't think they deserve my respect, at least. <laughs> so. Working at it from the other end, the uh, injection of hormones has not uh, converted anyone to heterosexuality. It has simply <coughs> altered physical <coughs> characteristics. It has not changed the emotional makeup of any human being. All right, so that you would discount the importance of that particular study. Are, are any studies that try to say, uh, you know, identify a physical or a social cause for homosexuality? so that we can discard all of the questions that are stacked here that says, do you believe that homosexuality is brought on in part by heredity or environment or both or neither? Now, yes. that, that was a very good one because it takes yes. in a whole stack of them here. Okay. Well, it seems to me like all the studies are being done, you know, what causes homosexuality, but I haven't heard of a study being done what causes heterosexuality. And they're always looking for a cause, like there was something wrong. That's the basic argument. That's the basic thing I don't like about these kind of studies. They start out thinking something's wrong and they look for a cause. Yeah, one of the basic assumptions there is heterosexuality is, quote, normal because that's what other animals and things do. If you study other animals, there's like homosexual behavior that's exhibited in all other mammals and uh, particularly in primates, you know. And oftentimes this is when members of the opposite sex are, are available, you know. So it's obviously mammalian in heritage for us. It's a, it's a basic, um, it's just a basic potential that people have, you know, to be sexual. That's the important thing to realize. All right, so you're discounting environment. We, can't we didn't say that. No. We don't know. You're not accepting it as... We didn't because. respond really to the question. We <laughs> just said, what causes heteros? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but this question is asked a number of times, and, and I think that... There's a, yeah. there's a train of thought, a school of um, explanation that you are born basically... Uh, just sexual, bisexual, if you will, but you know, with no real tendency, and then you're socialized into heterosexuality because you're never really given the opportunity to see that homosexuality is possible. Um, I guess that'd be what I'd subscribe to in answering that. That's However, how does that hold true? Otherwise, there, there wouldn't be homosexuals if that held true. You know? There also might not be heterosexuals, so I just count both of those. <laughs> 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 you but can I find objections yeah. to almost any theory, you know. <laughs> 
We weren't addressing yourself to that question because it's not that we don't believe there are environmental and psychological factors influencing our development. It's just that the reason people want to know what in the environment is so that they can, quote, cure it, is a, is, you know, not yeah. accepting it as a possible result naturally of the environment, both alternatives, heterosexual and homosexual activity. All right. Then I will pass along on that. And I will remind you that the numbers to call if you have questions, 294-7307, from Des Moines, 244-3738. We will be back after this message. City with a load of fresh donuts. We made a right turn sign, gave Tranny a shake, and took the Honey Creek ramp and applied some brake at the old home filler up and keep on the trucking cafe looking for Mavis. Now we've been every place between here and South Sioux and we've seen us a truck stop in Wickers too, but this gal's built like a burlap bag full of bobcats. She's got it together. Well, she come out to meet us, I was checking her order. 36 plain and a dozen assorted. Old Sloan just sat there watching and wagging and wishing. I says, you wait in the truck, boy. And then I went inside. She says, what'll it be? It says a plane for him and a choco for me. And she come back with a big old sack full of old home dunkers and a bone for Sloan. I said, much obliged, old Sloan give a bark. I left her an invoice and he left his heart at the old home filler up and keep on the trucking cafe. Yeah, old home is good donuts. Make mine chocolate. That's a favorite choice of many people. But when you're counting calories, maybe you've given up on the sweets. Well, Anderson Erickson Dairy has the answer. It's A.E. Low-Fat Chocolate Milk, an unbeatable combination of A.E. Low-Fat Milk and the best grade of chocolate available. The way A.E. makes it, the delicious flavor stays consistent throughout. When it's a refreshing beverage you want without the calories, be sure to have plenty of A.E. Low-Fat Chocolate Milk on hand. It has that quality you can taste. Straighten your tie. Company's coming. Three little maids from the toughest school in the jungle. Yeah! The general. The field marshal. The colonel. Savage sisters. Are you the girl to call for the camp? You're right on time. Savage. Our guests tonight are members of the Gay People's Alliance and the Lesbian Alliance. We've changed two of the panelists. To my left is David Windham and Carolyn Scherna. Welcome to the panel. And going on with the questions, and we have a whole stack of them. How do homosexuals recognize each other? Do you have secret signals? Does the wearing of an earring by a male have a meaning? Um, how do you we have a secret handshake. <laughs> Yeah. But we can't disclose it over the air. <laughs> I'd rather you didn't, and that's, that's all right. No. Are there, there, there is no particular way to tell a person is a homosexual. Once again, that, you know, there, there are signs that you can tell if someone perhaps is attracted to you, which are no different than if you're a heterosexual, once again. But there are no... I don't think so. There's you can spend a lot of time guessing, you know, and never yeah. really know for sure. But I think the earring was directed in my direction. Just because I wear an earring, which a lot of people don't see, but no, sometimes I didn't know they do. That you, were. <laughs> you know, I wear an earring because I want to wear an earring. You know, there's no particular. You know, doesn't make any difference which side I wear it on. Okay, but so that no. you don't view that as terribly earring. significant. A lot of people wear earrings anymore. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of <men> <laughs> How do you, how do your religious beliefs uh, allow for your homosexuality, or are you atheists? <laughs> 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 Actually, I believe in the mother goddess. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, is this a problem? Religion? No. Well, it was when I told my parents. Uh, in some ways, my mother was as upset or more upset that I wasn't going to church anymore than I was uh, <coughs> homosexual. 
Yeah, I was raised as a Catholic, and uh, that was my decision to, uh, you know, not go to church anymore. It was not because of my homosexuality, but of many other things that I saw as um, not liking, you know, in the church. Are there uh, homosexuals, are, is there a place for the homosexual in the churches as they're organized now? Are some of the churches more um, responsive than others? Well, there, there are groups of homosexuals who've got together and formed their own churches simply because traditional churches haven't met our needs, you know. Although some churches seem to be liberalizing, I don't know if it's only minor concessions they're making, but at least they're actively um, interested in the question now, you know. For years, like during the Inquisition, gay men were burned as faggots and gay women as witches, you know, so things have changed somewhat. <laughs> Not much, though. Yeah. Especially in, you know, regular organized churches. Like, um, when my father first found out that I was a lesbian, he immediately went to a priest, and the priest said, well, take her to a psychiatrist. But because he was so freaked out by psychiatry, he didn't, you know. But it's just, um, well, I think that a lot of churches are, have male supremacy. And so both male homosexuals and lesbians are threatening to that. I think we may be stereotyping to some extent just um, lumping all churches and all religions into organized religions because individual parishes within the Roman Catholic Church will vary, as <laughs> will vary in their interpretation. And I believe that there's nothing in my religion that disallows for homosexuality. This question quotes two things that have been said. One is that mothers cannot keep their children. The second statement was homosexuality, homosexuality is not abnormal. Okay, those are the statements. Then the, question, the viewer goes on, is it normal to give up your children for the love of another adult versus the love of your children? Well, do you give up your children or are they taken away from you? Yeah. And you see, even if, um, if if there's a custody case in which the custody is contested and both parents want the child, the mother does not have to be a, quote, active lesbian. She simply has to be a lesbian, and that is a, that is a, a, a threat, a lever, that the father will have at any time to take the case back to court, simply threatening that she was once or that she has those tendencies. Um, I think it's not a simple question, and unfortunately that's the way it's usually interpreted. I think what about when um, a woman gets a divorce and then remarries another man. It's not thought of as giving up you know, children for the love of another man. A better question would be why do you have to give up, you know, any person you love, you know, why do you have to stop this relationship? You know, I can think of no valid reason. And if you give up custody, are you giving up your children? Because that means that every man who lets his wife have the husband of the children, in a sense, gives up his children. It would be better to stay married to someone you don't love, simply not to, quote, give up your children, so that you do not really lose your children. You lose the close custodial relationship, but you can maintain a relationship with your children without having custody of them. Connie, this question is directed to you. You mentioned that you did have children. How old are your sons? Have you told them? Uh, does your husband help with them to understand you, or does he have negative attitudes? Um, I'd rather not discuss my ex-husband, but my, my sons are all very young, and they, at this point, have no particular fears about expression of love towards one sex or another. They are young. They're all under eight. And so as much as they're able to understand, they're familiar with words and love and tenderness, but I don't think there has come a time yet to have an adult discussion about you know, what the society thinks about homosexuality with them. Do you ever have any trouble with employers because of your homosexuality? Not yet. Not yet. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. This undoubtedly may be true for you because you're all relatively young, but has the tradition been that you have reason to perhaps fear that you will have trouble. Is it a concern to you? I should hope in the future that things will be at such a point where you don't have to worry about loss of your job. In many cities across the country now, sexual orientation has been added to the Human Rights Code, you know, which says you can't discriminate on the basis of sex, color, creed, race, religion, etc. They've added sexual orientation. Minneapolis and St. Paul are two examples, fairly close. And hopefully, you know, eventually the entire country will have this type of protection, you know, because we're 
a, mon a minority group just as any other minority group. Except that, you know, just because you have the law, do you mean that it's mm -hmm. going to be enforced or the people are going to follow it? You know, they could fire you on some cause, <coughs> like you, you didn't show up for work Thursday of last month or something, you know, and the actual cause is because you happen to be a homosexual, but you, could, you couldn't prove that. Still, if the laws do change, it's one positive step, and eventually, and hopefully, that would lead to attitude change. It tends to be some of the pattern which has been created, I think, in the past. Yeah. What other sorts of discrimination do you encounter? Referring, they refer specifically to jobs, schooling, and that sort of thing. You've already taken care of jobs. What about other uh, sorts of discrimination? Social discrimination, if you happen to be involved in what would be a, a marriage you know, with the same-sex partner, your partner is not automatically included as a husband or a wife, may not even be introduced, may be totally ignored in a social setting simply because it, you know, they don't know what to do and you're not automatically um, related. If you should die, um, very elaborate wills have to be made out so that that partner would share in your life the way um, a marriage partner would share. There's just there just aren't any vehicles legally and economically for expressing um, commitment. Any other ways? I'm afraid personally, like we, <coughs> we're sort of here on the island of the university, you know, which is a more liberal atmosphere, you know, so perhaps we don't meet with as much hostility as people outside of the university community might. So perhaps we can't talk as well about that. Okay. Any other comments? Do you have any bitterness toward heterosexuals? If there is any bitterness at all, I think it has to be a specific heterosexual who's done something, you know, to a gay person. Because, okay, like, there have been instances where uh, parents of gay people have gone to their employers or to their schools and had them um, thrown out or maybe, like, um, Gangs of queer beaters who get up, you know, like maybe four people to one person, which is really a masculine way of proving how but how butch you are and how much you know you're above the other person. That's the only kind of bitterness I feel. Not to people, not to heterosexuals as a whole. Anyone else? How did you deal with the guilt feelings that were mentioned earlier when you first uh, started uh, realizing that you were homosexual? You said that there was a period. One of you, I think. I did. Yeah. I see. That there was a period when you felt very guilty about it. I didn't know if, if I said it was guilt or if I said I was afraid. Well, I either way, think, how did you how I did you feel I think I was more feelings? fear than guilt in my case. Um, <laughs> well, when I when I was 19 and started deciding, you know, this is what I am, and I had to deal with it. I don't know, like I positively reinforced myself. I went out and met other gay people and <coughs> talked about being gay and just worked on making myself feel better about myself. And as I did that, the fear went away, you know. For me, that was the way. Let's assume that perhaps this question is from someone who has, uh, <coughs> perhaps is experiencing guilt feelings. Do you have any suggestion, suggestions to them about working their way through? But they can contact us, like we're, we act as a supportive organization. I think Lesbian Alliance does too. Mm -hmm. We have our phone numbers in the daily. Our phone in the union right now is 294-5237 and we have people there on evenings. If people want to call in just to talk or anything, you don't have to commit yourself. We have meetings Sunday nights at the Frisbee House, which is on Lincoln Way here in Ames. You can perhaps talk about yours. Yeah, well we have a post office box, 1287, at the ISU station. We also have meetings you know, every Sunday night, which are usually advertised, that they can check the, the daily and find out where those meetings are going to be. Okay. What are your attitudes toward bisexuals? I am a bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> Only I am not, it, it's been often said by people who claim to be bisexual, they're not <coughs> persecuted, you know to buy for their bisexuality or persecuted for the homosexual half. And so even though the term lesbian comes from the outside, it's something I have to accept because it can be used as a threat against me. And so um, um, there is some feeling that saying you're a bisexual is a cop-out, that you're just afraid to go all the way and say, I'm a homosexual. Any other responses? I, I think bisexuals really get the short end of it <laughs> because they don't have any organization 
really. Okay, they get it from heterosexuals, you know, for their homosexual half, and they get it from homosexuals a lot of the time for their heterosexual half. And so they're really caught in the middle. But they put themselves in the middle, too. Do they? Do they? By well, choice. they are in the middle. Yeah, yeah. They, they are. put themselves there. It's important to remember, too, bisexuality isn't necessarily half this and half that. There are degrees of homosexuality and heterosexuality in every person, you know. You may have negligible amount of either one, or you may, may be somewhere in the middle or somewhere on either side of the middle or the end. And that does emphasize the sexual aspect of sexuality rather than the intimate relating to another human being because you've grown to love that person. You know, it, uh, it emphasizes the bed aspect of sexuality. I think that bisexuality is the ideal, that, well, you know, everybody is, has certain aspects of homosexuality and he heterosexuality in them, and um, as soon as any kind of oppression as far as sexism can be dealt with, then possibly everybody will be bisexual and will feel free to relate to either sex. Would you prefer any of you to be heterosexual? If no. I wanted to, I would have no. been by now. <laughs> <laughs> we would prefer to have the rights and privileges of, of heterosexuals, but, um, but... But you don't wish that whatever the... That I was an entirely different person so that I wouldn't receive any persecution for the person that I am, is <laughs> what's underlying that question. Yes. This question dealt with, a, in part at least, do you believe in God and the Bible? Because if you do, you are going against what the Bible says uh, in that homosexuality is wrong. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible has no relationship with God anyway. The Bible was written by people, usually priest kings who had, very, who had a lot of authority and wanted to keep it that way. So they wrote all these things against people who wouldn't follow their will. Well, you're offending some people because some people do believe that the Bible is divinely inspired no matter who wrote it. And I'm taking exception to the fact that it says anywhere in the Bible that um, homosexuality is wrong. When you get, I don't, I can't talk to the person who wrote that card, but if you can search out those passages in the original words, you can see that it's really left to individual interpretation as to whether the Bible actually does say homosexuality is wrong. I believe one of the passages admonishes women from wearing red dresses and also from eating shrimp mm -hmm. and uh, and includes yeah. in that homosexuality the yeah those are, are abominations are abominations yeah. some people wear red dresses <laughs> and eat shrimp yeah I, I would question anyone who uh, does things exactly by the bible you know i don't think there's anyone who doesn't go against the bible if you take it literally and interpret it that way How old were you when you had uh, your first uh, homosexual relationship? Was it with an older or a person of the same age? When I younger. This perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I was 13 and I was younger. And the other person was younger than I was. And initiated a relationship too. I didn't. You, were th you say you were 13. I was, I, as far as I can recall, I wasn't keeping score <laughs> exactly, but... Uh, <laughs> I think it this perhaps goes back to the to yeah. the Welby program and what yeah. is implied there about mm. relationship. Yeah. My my impression is that most people's first experiences are with someone of, of close to the same age. I don't know. This isn't anything we've ever talked about. Is that true mm. for you? I'm not sure. My, my first experience was a was with a woman who was several years older than I am, and I initiated that relationship. So if they're trying to get at <laughs> any kind of uh, cause and effect thing there. I don't think they're going to find it. Yeah. In my case, like, I, I'd i been involved in gay liberation for almost a year before I'd even had my first homosexual experience. So, you know, I was like 19 or 20 at the time. This is for the women uh, in the Lesbian Alliance. Does lesbianism have any relationship to the uh, feminist movement? If so, what is it? It has everything to do with the feminist movement because if women had equal rights with men, um, lesbianism would not be an issue at all. I mean, if women had a right to live and to make love with whom they wished to make love, the, then it would be an empty word. It would not be a threat. And in cases, um, feminists have become political lesbians. Um,